And check this leather out. Remember how dead it looked? It doesn't seem to be competing with it. I take the turkey baster and I stick it down in the tank. And the hermits are like climbing all over the rock now. Hey guys. I'm even too tired to walk in on my intro today. Masonry this morning, and it's about 90 degrees out here in Morristown, New Jersey. That's where I was working. So this video Sunday is going over really big. I mean, in my world. Hey, let me show you. Check this out. 400 views. That's like double what I get during this time of the week after a Sunday video. So it's got people interested. That's kind of cool for my tiny little channel. Perfect. And anyway, today will be Water Change Wednesday. I have a couple questions and kind of a boring video today, guys. I'm just gonna update you on things. I wanted to tell you we're going through a move. I'm moving from here across town. That's happening Friday. So what I'm going to do is log and make a video of the move. How I'm going to move the 20 and the 5 and get it over there and set up. It's probably going to be a couple, maybe two or three part video on how I get everything over there and, and reset up. That's what's going on. We're moving across town. All right, let's get into the question and answer and let's get into my update. All right, guys. This really isn't a question, but I'll turn it into one. Kenneth says, never seen an HOB used as a fuge. So yeah, uh, you can use a hang off the back for a small, very mini refugium, but they work. You just use the compartment that they normally shove all the sponges and the carbon and all that stuff in there. That's predominantly why I would use a hang off the back, not for filtering the aquarium in any way, but just to generate circulation. It's almost like a overflow, you know, because it's dragging water out of the aquarium and back in again. Guys, you'll have to forgive the sound here. I'm talking into the cabinet, but look how the star polyp is growing around the acros. and the Pasolopora here. It doesn't seem to be competing with it. It's possible that the competition between the acro and the star polyp, the acros are winning for some reason. Maybe it's just because it's gonna gravitate on the rocks first, and then it'll just smother them. But in my move that's coming up, I'm going to have to do something with this green star polyp. John asked, what brand pump am I using in my two reef glass skimmers? And I don't know whether or not they have a reputation, but they're stellar pumps. And the pump on my 20 gallon is probably three years old now. And you know you're running a skimmer almost 24 seven all the time, except the water change. And sometimes when I put amino acids in, I'll shut it off for 15 minutes, but it's the same pump and it does a great job. Guys, I'd have to recamp what I said about this style of fora here. I may have had some RTN. I'm just not that familiar with it because it seems like if it was RTN, why did it leave the tops? If anyone can help me with that answer, that would be great. But I'm noticing when the hermits climb on there, they're just now 
eating the algae that's starting to grow. So maybe I did have some RTN on that. And my digitata is coming back. It's a little light, not so pink as it was, but it's not dead for sure. This isn't a question either, but it could be turned into a question. Last video or two videos ago, I mentioned using vinegar as a anti-corrosive, like to get rid of your calcium buildup on your equipment. And Broke Man Reefer 45 suggested using citric acid. It works the same, but it doesn't have the corrosive attributes that the vinegar has on the parts if you're using it to clean pumps or whatever devices you're using to clean. Citric acid will be better on your pump. So thanks Broke Man Reefer 45. So you guys know I've been having difficulty with hair algae. And there was a lot up on the top, which I removed all together. I left a few strands of Calerpa there. That'll grow back, but it was really bad up on the top. However, I think I've nipped it in the bud, as they say. I think I've gotten control of it. What I did this past Sunday, large water change again, and went in with the brush again, and now I'm seeing some progress. It's not growing back, and I'm noticing the hermits are like climbing all over the rock now. And I have an answer to what did I do wrong, another what did I do wrong, in the five gallon that could have caused the hair algae to get out of control. And that is, it's a good idea that if you don't have a real heavy flow or turbulence in your tank, you should what we call blast your live rock. I take the turkey baster and I stick it down in the tank and you wail on it and that blows out a lot of the detritus that settles in areas where your flow and water circulation don't cause it to suspend. One other thing I did, guys, if you notice what I did with my high gar, I brought it down about three to four inches from where it was before. That way it'll create more flow down in the bottom, as you can see. I'm hoping I can stir up a little more of that detritus in there for the hair algae issue. So I lowered that. And check this leather out. Remember how dead it looked? Perfect now. Let's come back to life. All right, that's it for this one, guys. Have a great day, and I'll see you on Sunday, hopefully with a video, something with my move. So take care now. Have a good one. All right, take care now, guys. It's the thumbs up. What the, what's the thumbs up? All right, guys. Take care now. See you Sunday. All right, guys. See you... Oh. All right, guys. That does it for this one. Have a great day. Hopefully, I'll see you Sunday with a cool video. Take care now. Take care now. All right, guys. That does it for this one. Have a great day. <laughs> Come on.